Hey, what's up everyone? Joseph Williams here. Before we get started, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and today we're going to be talking about belts. Do you need them? Are they important? What belt should you buy? Let's find out. Hey, what's up everyone? Joseph Williams here. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I am an exercise physiology student. I'm about to graduate with my degree. I am an exercise nerd. I've been involved in this for years and years and years. Uh, at Jaws Fitness on Instagram, Twitter, etc, etc. So today we're going to be talking about weightlifting belts. Are they important? Do you need them? Who are they for? Blah, blah, blah. You know the whole spiel. So I first want to start out by saying that your belts go around your midsection, right? What everyone would perceive to be as your core. And technically, your core is your trunk. It's, it's everything from your hips up. And I, I say hips very loosely. It's, it's more your pelvis. But it's everything from the lumbar up to the, to the top of the thoracic, bottom of the cervical. Let's just call that your... your uh, your trunk, okay, and your core. So there are tons of muscles. I say tons. There are quite a few muscles that make up this section of your body. Now, primarily what everyone likes to focus on is what they consider as the core or the abdominal. And of course, you can't forget the low back. Now, these muscles are consisted of the transverse ad abdominus, the rectus abdominis, internal, external obliques, serratus anterior, uh, your erector spinae, which are the two big long muscles that go on each side of your spine. And these are muscles, um, and we can go into some, some other ones, but primarily let's just talk about those, okay? We'll go into that side of things on a completely separate video. But primarily these muscles are to keep you stable and to keep you upright. If you look at their lines of action, especially in the abdominal, there's some running up and down, there's some running to the side, there's some running coming like this. It's a mess, okay? It's, it's one of those, how do you work those? Honestly, once again, that's another video. But these muscles are supposed to keep you stable, right? Right? We can all agree on this? Yes. Of course, these muscles are supposed to keep you stable, especially if you squeeze them tight. So if you're going to be doing like a heavy compound movement, such as a squat, a deadlift, a power lifters even use uh, do this on a bench, you want to keep that tight. If you keep your ab abdomen tight, it can help you reduce injuries or reduce your chance at injuries. So if the abdomen is so wonderful, who needs a belt, right? Well, actually... Belts are really beneficial for a lot of people. Um, they're, they're, we could go into many different philosophies. Bodybuilders like to use them uh, to help with their waist. Power lifters, Olympic lifters like to use them to help with stability when going for maximal lifts. Primarily, most people who are going submaximally, submax, submaximally. There, there we go. I can speak. I said I'm an exercise phys major, not an English major. We'll save the English for somebody else. So, w when it comes to when to use a belt, it really just depends on what you're comfortable with and what your particular goals are. If, let's say you are a bodybuilder and you are looking to maintain maximal strength while improving your physique and trying to reduce injury, by all means, wear a belt whenever you want to. I'm not going to bash that at all. I'm not going to bash anybody for wearing a belt. But there are physical therapists and a lot of doctors and exercise uh, physiologists out there that claim that you only need to wear a belt when you get up near maximal levels. Let's say above 87 to 90% of your one rep max. Uh, typically, that's, that's kind of my philosophy. I, I don't use it until I need it or until the weight gets above 80%. I've had a uh, bulge disc in my thoracic spine before. So I kind of know what back injuries feel like and it's kind of painful. I don't want to risk injuring myself when I get up to those weights. So I just slap on the belt. In strength we trust, right? Uh, just for the record, this shirt came from uh, the Warhouse Gym. Rob and Dana Lynn Bailey, they, that's their gym. By no means am I affiliated with them at all or their gym or their apparel or blah, 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 blah. I just really enjoy the shirt. I mean, who wouldn't? 
Right. And there are people um, that believe that if you wear a belt, your abs will get weaker. But as long as you're working your abs in some form or fashion, uh, primarily isometric movements, you don't have to worry about your abs or your abdomen getting weaker. That's it's kind of counterproductive, you know what I mean? So uh, if you want to wear a belt all the time, by all means, do your thing, but make sure you're, you're focusing on strengthening that midsection, uh, whether it be your, your rector spinae or your, your abdomen. Uh, some different exercises are uh, planks or side planks. That, for example, that's an isometric hold. Now, when it comes to buying a belt, uh, there are tons of belts out there, and, and I know that a lot of people struggle with finding the right belt. I, too, once struggled with this. Long before I had declared my major, just in my early years of college, I was trying to goof around and try to get a belt because I knew I needed one, because only lifters wear belts, right? If I would have read Jim Wendler's book, 531, five, four or five years ago, I would have known not to skimp on quality, but I didn't. So what belt is good? Now I do have a couple belts here to show you guys. This is just your typical Gold's Gym belt. I bought it at Walmart for maybe 15 bucks. Uh, it's not very thick at all. Um, pretty much the rule of thumb is the thicker the belt, the better. This is super stiff. So that was one thing that kind of drew me to it. The price drew me to it as well. I, ha I wore this belt for maybe somewhere around 6 to 12 months and this started happening. Super frustrating. I honestly was to a point where I was like, well, there's no point in using this belt anymore. I need to buy a new belt. And I struggled with trying to find the right belt. And finally, I decided to go with Rogue Fitness with their belt. This Olympic weightlifting belt had just came out and what drew me to the Olympic weightlifting belt as opposed to the powerlifting belt is the, the powerlifting style belt is super thick and I, I do a lot of Olympic lifting on top of powerlifting so I didn't want that to get in the way at all of, of anything. So I decided to go with the Olympic lifting style because it does have the thinner front. Now I do want to show you how thick that is. Super thick compared to this one. I don't know if you can see that, but this one just has a little bit of padding, which isn't really necessary and not something you want. The stiffer the belt, the better. That's why you want to go with a good, solid, thick belt. Now, the other thing about this belt is I've had this well over a year. I've used it multiple times a week for over a year. And I don't have much negative to say about it at all. Um, it's it's getting a little worn here where you strap up, but honestly, it's held up so much better than that cheap belt. Uh, this cost me about $100 more than, than the cheap belt, uh, but I was actually working somewhere at the time and they gave out bonus money all the time, so I technically only paid for shipping for it, which was nice. Um, definitely helped me out a lot. The only time that I've ever, ever gotten upset at this was I was attempting a uh, new max for my clean and I kept missing it. And I was, uh, I was replaying in my head what I was doing. I had my brother show me on film or on camera what, what I was doing and, and I noticed uh, I, I'd taken three attempts and two out of those three attempts, I caught the bar on the stupid buckle. Uh, or maybe it was this. I don't know. It was just some a part of the belt. The bar was getting caught on it, and it frustrated me so bad. I took it and I slung it, and then I just ripped the bar off the ground and, and cleaned the weight that I wanted. Uh, I have never, ever, ever done that to this belt again because it's an expensive belt. I paid for this, um, obviously, like I said, with bonus money, but it was still my money, and. I try to take care of it. I try to take care of my things. By no means is Rogue Fitness uh, sponsoring this video whatsoever. I, but I do believe in their quality, especially when it comes to something like that belt. Uh, it's arguably the best belt I've ever used. And I've used at least uh, half a dozen to a dozen different brands in my life. 
Now, this isn't a video to try to sell you on Rogue's weightlifting belt, but this is a video to tell you do not skimp on a belt. It's like buying bacon. You don't buy cheap bacon. Cheap bacon tastes cheap. You buy high quality stuff. It tastes delicious and it's thick and juicy. Same thing with the belt. It's not really juicy, but it's nice and thick and it's high quality. I definitely recommend something all leather like this. Uh, shop around. Find, find a good deal, find something you like. Most companies even have a 30 day money back guarantee. You can do that as well. So anywho, I hope you enjoyed this video. Takeaway message, what is our takeaway message? Are belts absolutely 100% necessary? No. Will belts help you in the long run? Yes. Do you need to skimp on doing abdominal or core work? No, absolutely not. Do not skimp on buying a belt because you will waste your money in the long run and you will hate yourself. If you plan on being a lifter for the next 10, 20, 30 years, invest in something high quality that's going to last you for at least half that time or even longer. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, like it. Please share it with your friends as well and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.